So welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So good evening, good afternoon, and good morning. So we are very pleased to have you here to our launch and opening of a new point of view. So it's a really a pleasure to introduce you our new uh, digital fair that a new point of view will anticipate the edition of London and New York and they will anticipate during a long four weeks from July 14 to August 7, 2020. So, and this is really a great occasion to introduce our physical fair of next September. So, but let me uh, present ourselves. I'm Orietta Pelizzari, the concept curator of the content of this digital edition, and the very guest of the day, which is Mrs. Fulvia Bacchi, our Linea Pelle CEO. Hi, Fulvia. Hi, good morning, everybody. I am very, very pleased to have uh, all of you here with us today. After this uh, emergency, we, we found uh, necessary to, to introduce a new way to conceive our exhibition, our presentation. And so we launched this new project, a new point of view. And uh, as Orietta will explain to you later, we are very excited about this our adventure is a completely new way to communicate with our uh, visitor, with uh, our buyers. And uh, we hope uh, you appreciate it. Just in case we are always at your disposal to find other, uh, other way to, to stay with us uh, and to, um, to live uh, with us the adventure of Italian leather and all the other materials which are part of our exhibition. And uh, so now I give uh, the floor to Orietta to explain better what we, uh, we have thought to launch this project. And I remain at your disposal for any information about it. And uh, of course, we wait all of you in September in Milano both digital or in physical uh, way, because we launched this exhibition. And uh, until now, we have a lot of exhibitors, very important exhi exhibitors, ready to present their collection for autumn, winter 21-22. So it will be another occasion to show how important is uh, our, uh, our industry in the leather field and in all the other um, chain, uh, supply chain for leather goods, footwear, garment, and design. So I wait for you in Milano and now I give the floor to Orietta. Thanks. Thank you, Fulvia. Thank you because you really anticipate uh, this is, which is something like a new adventure physical and digital adventure and and also it's interesting to see that we decided to build as a team four weeks of virtual networking so four weeks that start today and every week according with the dry timing for british market and also new york market they will showcase 37 companies live that they will tell about their stories, their collection, their news that they created in the latest month. And also 20s virtual networking. And this is really for us the occasion to show you uh, an example of the first week because every week we will upgrade in our website what we are going to do. And we really design it this kind of a digital platform in a way to also introduce the most interesting industry trends and industry talks and also industry researchers on innovation in the different types of subjects. So look at in this case, uh, showing to you what's going on this week. 
Uh, this week will be an intense uh, starting because after this opening, we will start with a forum talking about respect and responsibility, which is a way to be conscious uh, with very, very special guests from all over the world. And then tomorrow, Wednesday 15, we will talk about colors, materials, and the way to showcase the best online continuously with sustainability and future perspective in our innovation talks, or even going inside of how to simply apply digital practices to your e-market. And it's also interesting to see that this week we will start with two companies. One is Gruppo Mastrotto in uh, leading in leather goods, in leather, uh, in leather, has a leather tannery, and also crafting digital manufacturing. And another company that will be start this morning, uh, this week, will be Click, which is more focused on components and latest technologies on components. And of course, we want to close this week again talking about responsibility and sustainability with our ladder terminology so because uh, in this opening we have several journalists i like to focus a little bit more on the different detail and also to all the designers and brands they are A few words on the trend seminars, which is uh, which is always the the, the, the meeting and appointment that nobody that nobody uh, where uh, let me say uh, nobody want to leave or nobody want to uh, don't attend because they love it to see what's going on in the in the trends. And our team will present two times uh, this week for London and in the next couple of weeks for New York. And this is very important because we can see how the trends are evolving for winter 21st and 22. But even in this case, uh, it will be interesting to spend the day of today because today we are really focusing on talking on what is responsibility with our three uh, very honored guests that I will introduce in a few minutes. Let me just wait that everybody will be connected. And also just spending a few uh, words about our eSpace workshop. Uh, many people decided to subscribe to our uh, eSpace workshop, which will be focused in two different topics. Uh, one in the focus in the London expert, Carolina Calzado Oliveira and Justine Fox. They are co-founder of Calzada Fox, and they will explain how color and material can revive, they can keep life inside of the digital world. And this is really a kind of new revolutionary way to keep, keep in contact and stay in contact with our client. And even from New York, we have Jacqueline Brennan and Rika Shah, and they work mostly on how the e-market can use the same tools or the virtual tools between B2C and also B2B. So we will split in the two ways and we will give the best practices in how to navigate inside of the latest technologies and also how to apply these latest technologies to our B2B market. So innovation talks, which are curated by our Federico Brugnon, Square Curator will take life once a week for four weeks and of course Federico will take and will bring to life many different conversations with very interesting and important uh, innovator at the latest talking between robotics uh, to digital world and understanding how we can live and how can we apply inside of the digital showcasing into manufacturing that can help all the different brands from design to interior to footwear and also to fashion packaging and lifestyle because we cover several subjects so going to thursday 
is interesting, of course, we will have uh, Antonella Bertagni in the Fashion Committee coordinator on the trends, and Chiara Fanteg, Lina Pelle collaborated in the international event. And they will go deep to surf into the leading topics uh, of trends. By the way, on the same day, we will have a Grupo Mastrotto Spotlight. And trust me that every week, every brand took several topics to introduce designer and make designer understanding what's going on in behind the scene in their company, what they created and which were their latest uh, proposal uh, after the COVID. And this will be one a very intriguing aspect. Of course, everyone can subscribe, can question and answer, and can be in contact with the brands that we showcase. And of course, we will go through the weeks going into another virtual forum, always in Thursday. And in this case, we will talk about crafting digital manufacturing with Loreto Di Rienzo, R&D director of Dilo and Studio, and Francesco Domenico Puzzello, additive manufacturing specialist and researcher. So we'll be the first of the virtual forum talking about how digital work can enter inside of the manufacturer from fashion to design in a much easy way. So when we used, uh, when we used to say what's going on now in the fashion, we have, we have to say the future is now. We are already with our deeper hands in the future. And then we will go to, um, let me say, on the Friday 17th, so when we will have components and metallic, where some apply to metallic components. So I'm talking about 3D or uh, special printing or digitally finishing. And then, because as I anticipated at the beginning, responsibility and sustainability are our main topics. So we ask it to Maurizia Canto, the market analyst of UNICH, the Italian Tanneries Organization, and Gustavo Gonzalez Sequiano, the Secretary General of Cotans, to speak about the latest news in terminology, correct terminologies when we define material and most of the time material related to sustainability, of course, with a special focus on leather, pure leather and authentic leather. So now we are so excited to start with our today session. We, we finished to open all the weeks. So, but I, I really ask you to be connected, stay in contact because we, you will receive all the updates every week. So, our forum today will start with the importance of respect and responsibility as a way to be conscious. And this is really one of the very important challenges that we wanted to take in consideration because uh, we assume that after COVID, uh, sustainability took the most important roles as before and was also uh, shaped in many different new ways. Something was clear that was more greenwashing, something else was clear that was the authenticity. For this reason, I'd like to share with you now, so let me go inside directly of our Instagram page. I'd like to share with you, I wish that every one of you can see our Instagram page, so Linea Pelle Fair Pages. We like to share with all of you several opinion of our entrepreneurs or professionals that they give their opinion about responsibility. So I like to make you listening one. Let's see. Being sustainable is being responsible. 
sustainability is more than just reducing emissions. It means respecting our planet and our people, which define our environment. We would like to be remembered as the generation who overcame the Anthropocene era, who found something to stop human behaviors to be so damaging for the Earth and its population. To do this, we established two main goals, innovation and inclusion. In this cloudy and uncertain times, innovation means that we all need to change perspective. It is our responsibility to bring new and challenging solutions to the system. New ways of producing, new ways of developing, new ways of communicating, and new ways of caring. Inclusion, on the other hand, might be better explained through the concept of interdependence. We all depend on each other in the industry. We all work together. We all fight together to provide a better future to who's coming next. So let's work with love. So thanks so much. Here we have being sustainable one of the, let me say, one of the, uh, the interview of our uh, entrepreneurs, a young generation of entrepreneurs. But of course, in our Instagram live page, you can see all the entrepreneurs that took part of our adventures, as Fulvia said, to give their very personal opinion about uh, what does it mean to be responsible and to be conscious right now, which is really the time to change, and it's a challenging time. So now, uh, let me ask to our honor guest today to open their screen their video and unmute their microphone and I also ask if please also Fulvia can open their video because it's I think it's a really the time I want to involve uh, several specialists oh perfect so I can see that one by one our panelists are coming in so welcome Will welcome Will so hi <laughs> How are you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, hi, Ori. It's nice to see you. <laughs> and thank you so much, Will, because you wake very early, so early, because you are in LA, and in LA is super early time. And thank you so much to be so close to us, to guest in. And then welcome, Juicy. So, Juicy Bettoni as well. Welcome. Good afternoon. So, where are you? Hi, Rieta. Hi, Fulvia. Thanks for having me here. Very well, thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, we also wait Michele Ciavarella, that uh, is a deputy journalist of uh, RCS, Corriere della Sera. He's, uh, he will jump inside in a few minutes, but as you know, today is a very exciting day for all the Italian industry because we also have the fashion week, fashion show and showcasing. So he will jump inside to give his opportunity or his ideas. And I really like to ask to Fulvia, uh, why uh, we decided together or which is her opinion about responsibility or what does it mean to be responsible inside of the Italian industry and uh, when we talk about Italian industry we talk about leather tanneries and also materials components because we represent several types of industry. I think it's interesting to, uh, to know what uh, Fulvia can give to us. Thank you, Orietta. I think nobody can ignore how much important is for Italian tanneries responsibility and sustainability. I can say Italian companies are already in the right path. They take care of sustainability and responsibility since many, many years ago. And I can say even before we can we start to to talk about sustainability. And what is, what is the meaning of sustainability for our companies? For our companies, I think, is taking care of their employees or their uh, stakeholders. It is important to, 
to take care of the process, always innovating because we need to save energy, chemical products, and to uh, give uh, to our consumer security safe uh, products. And now we need to think to a new generation of products, always more safe, but also authentic. As you said before, it is very important to speak about genuine products. And I think uh, this is the, the most important aspect. We need to speak to our consumer in a real way without um, creating uh, false, uh, um, false needs. For example, we cannot speak about sustainability also because we say we recycle products from plastic. This is not sustainability. Sustainability, as I said many times in my, in my life, is a, a very heavy um, objective of our companies. And I am very proud to represent this kind of companies which I have always in mind as to protect the, the, the environment, their companies, their employees. So it is very important to underline this aspect. Thank you, Fulvia, because it was interesting, it was important for our honor guests to also to listen the position and the point of view of uh, of Linea Pelle and of the Italian industry, for sure. So I like it right now to uh, open this, uh, this conversation first with a uh, women first. Can we ask <laughs> to, uh, I want to ask to Josie to introduce uh, who you are, which is your job in a class. So, because I really want to prepare from the, uh, material to the manufacturing, the making, and then arriving to the our hot topic of the communication with Will and Michele. So, Juzi, what you what, what are you doing in your life? So, well, I'm doing something that I love. First of all, <laughs> you know, even if uh, you know everybody thinks it's a challenge, but I think it's really something uh, that makes the difference also in uh, you know private life. I'm the CEO of CLAS, that is a platform, international platform based in Milan, by the way, that started in 2007, so 13 years ago. And, uh, you know, it's an eco hub that uh, is trying to uh, put together aesthetics, innovation and responsibility all together from a product perspective, but also with, uh, you know, the communication, the two things align. And from the beginning, we thought it was important to start with materials because how you can create, you know, something different or something responsible if you do not have the ingredients, you know? Everybody's talking about the fact that, you know, uh, making uh, fashion, making, uh, you know, um, garments is like to be a, a chef, you know? You need to know very well your ingredient in order to give something special out of it. And that's what we believe at class. So that's why for us it was important from the beginning to have uh, sustainable and responsibility but linked to beautiful things and innovative things and uh, you know from the beginning we start with the materials but uh, we you know year by year we arrive to the to a um, contest where uh, we have uh, two main areas the area of uh, tools and the area of the academy tools because you know in order to make things happen, you need a different, you know, we are in a, a very complex supply chain. So you need uh, materials, but you need uh, finishing, you need uh, uh, machines, you need, uh, you know, technologies, uh, you need uh, also the new future advice app in order to communicate these things at best. So you have tools and sourcing, for example, is not just material today, but we have a circular sourcing option, you know, starting from you know, the excess that has become a value also for us. But, you know, you can make things, but then you need to tell the story. And uh, you cannot tell the story if you do not have something that you have made. And without knowledge, no sustainability can exist. So we have a part of our 
work where we try to share. You know, share is the key thing. So, you know, Rome is not built in one day and one night. So it's a culture that we are trying to establish and we do it through, you know, tools. And at the same time, you know, the academy in order to share. So the two things together is giving a new way to tell values because, you know, at the end of the day, when we talk about sustainability and responsibility, we talk about new generation of values that is consumer is looking for. And that's why class has established itself as a sort of reference point in this area, you know, having teaming up in these 13 years with leaders around the world from manufacturer to brand designer and schools as well. So that's what I love to do every day of my life. So thank you, Juicy, because you really linked uh, what Fulvia was saying about the heritage and the responsibility aspect of the company as entrepreneurs. And I assume you are really the link uh, from who is making material and product and several technology and the, and the designer who is designing something for the actual generation, future generation, the final consumer. So we have to work all together. Absolutely. Part of the explanation of the name class uh, is really linked to this. Class means creativity, lifestyle, sustainable synergies. You know, we start with creativity because without creativity, nobody is going to care. You know, we live in the design world. We need to have a lifestyle. It needs to be beautiful and it needs to be part of our everyday life. It's not something that we do just for Christmas or for a special occasion. <laughs> it's something that should be part of ourselves, you know, and uh, synergies because we cannot do anything if we do alone. We need to, you know, start thinking, you know, like a big supply chain that, you know, in the past, when I started working, you know, you have the supply chain starting with the fibers going down to the consumer. And now all, thanks God, everything is completely uh, changed from bottom up because uh, the sourcing sometimes is coming directly from the consumer because we are talking about, uh, you know, giving a new life to something that has been discarded, for example, you know. So it's, it's really a great, you know, I keep saying that it's, uh, for sure it's a tough moment and COVID told us a little bit more that it's time to change, I think. You know, but at the same time, we have never seen such a, uh, you know, a opportunity period because when we start working, we have, you know, 10 materials, generally speaking, and now we can have, I don't know how many, how many technologies. Let's talk about business models, <laughs> you know, it's, it's really great. And that's why, as you said, Orietta, it's really important to keep the conversation, you know, it's not about cluster of age. Today, it's a, it's a sort of cluster of your belief. And belief is really the most important thing. And on top of this, just to link with what Fulvia was saying, responsibility start with, you know, not, doesn't start with a material, but start with the company that take the responsibility to make a plan to produce. So it's not enough to have a responsible product if the company behind is not the one that believe in it. So we have seen many times, you know, some into bracket sustainable materials, but if we go to the company, <laughs> you know, that's something. So for us, sustainability, responsibility, we talk about how to innovate in a responsible way. So responsible innovation start with the company. And company is about uh, vision. It's about uh, ethical because people, is the key thing, as Fulvia was saying, and it's about um, you know uh, production because sometimes and most of the time uh, the production approach is uh, influencing the sustainability of the final product around fifty percent because you can have maybe a sustainable ingredient, but if the machines, if the the way people is producing the efficiency, there are you know, certification, not just for a product, but also for company you know, in terms of uh, social accomplishment, in terms of uh, how to produce in, produce in efficiency. So, you know, responsibility start with people directing a company. So heritage, <laughs> you know, and it, Italy, I think, knows something about it, is the first step. Yeah. Then it comes, for sure, 
you know, the product with all the details. And then, you know, I, I'm not going to disclose too much. We have, um, uh, you know, contemporary values to get responsibility. Yes. So starting from the creativity point, creativity made me thinking about storytelling and also about the role of communication. So, and for this point, I really like to ask Will, he of Quantas and Associates from LA, Will Campbell, I really like ask to you, uh, which is your, your role, uh, which is your position as, a, as an agency, as a company? Uh, for sure, I like because everyone now are so curious to know and to listen something that is coming from the United States, it's coming from uh, communication <laughs> and starting from the, what, what is going on. So, well, it's your, it's your floor. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um. No, thank you very much. So I'm Will Campbell. I'm a CEO at Quantity and Associates. And um, as a creative agency, we find our role to be help our clients grow their businesses by pushing culture in the right direction. Um, we know that we live in a world today where um, it's it's more important that you really understand what your company's contribution is to society more than just its um, products and services. I really loved what Juicy had to say in terms of the importance of values because that's really where it starts. So I think that that's, that's so important. Um, and that's what our job is, is um, to help our clients understand that they can actually grow um, and build their businesses by tapping into culture and connecting um, with uh, the, the cultural um, realities of their um, audience. <clears throat> so uh, a little bit about how we do that is really helping them to not only understand the realities of their brand, who they are, to really dig into what the soul is of that brand, but to do the same thing for the audiences that they're choosing to connect with, to really get a deep understanding of what's important to their consumers, not just from the products that they choose to purchase, but really from a, a cultural standpoint, an insight standpoint, really understanding the reality. Um, and then lastly, taking account for the macro realities that happen in, in, in our world in general. For instance, we're uh, facing this global pandemic among other crises that are at play. So we really help our clients bring those things together so they can understand how to exist, how to communicate in light of those circumstances. Um, and I think what really is at the center of that is a sense of empathy and understanding um, how to be empathetic as a corporation, as a business. Um, so that's what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. We have a lot of fun building stories around that, creating content, rolling out campaigns, launching products, um, but it all sort of centers on that point of view. And what, what you, because today we are, we are talking about responsibility and respect, and you see that we are crossing the border between B2C, B2B, or reverse, B2B, B2C, which actually at the beginning where we talked, we discussed it was kind of unusual stuff. But now we see that after this pandemic, uh, communicate in an organic way and crafting a valuable storytelling that sometimes start from the final consumer, other one, other times can start from the really beginning when you source the idea and the material and the creativity. How can you see this kind of two worlds merging or fusing together uh, in your experience for your for some of the company where you work? So is yeah, that absolutely Absolutely. I, I think there's a couple of things that are happening that are really important to what you're speaking about. Um, so one of the things that we've discovered is more recently, you know, in order to really engage your consumers at a B2C level, it's no longer good enough that 
we expect consumers to take our products, our services at face value. Um, they really do seek information. They want to know um, the ideas, the processes, the thoughts behind these products, behind the services. They want to know about um, your, your leadership, your CEOs. They want to know how you're developing products. What are the processes? Who are your suppliers? Um, how are things sourced? And this is really important because it helps, it helps uh, consumers who are seeking to support brands that are responsible. They really want to know how you got there. They really want to know the ingredients, the process, and in detail. The exciting thing about that is it gives brands and companies um, an entirely new way to connect. Um, an entirely new way to tell their story, to talk about their process, to allow um, consumers to go take, take a peek behind the veil. And we can get really creative in terms of how we tell those stories um, through content, through social media, through sitting down with um, staff, employees, designers, creators. You see more and more, it's not just about the product, it's about that designer, what was their process? It's about the manufacturing, what is the process? Um, so it, it, it's, now, it's now great to see the entire supply chain and consumers are really interested in learning more about that. Well, it's really, it's very interesting because of course uh, the chain will be also a different way to explain. So we talk about best practices. For sure, many are very curious to know which are the best practices, which are the best actions to involve the final client, the final consumer, to, to get interested in sustainable elements or to get involved, to trust, because now trusting means uh, transparency and so we, we really believe that uh, trust is one of the main elements of responsibility and respect it's, it's, it's one of the aim of value so maybe some of our panelists uh, want to ask something to will because maybe we want to to open a discussion but can i just uh, welcome Michele. So hi, Michele. hi everybody. Sorry for the delay. I was uh, very busy with the uh, digital uh, fashion week, and um, I was writing a review after the Prada uh, presentation. And uh, sorry for the for the delay. I'm uh, very happy to stay with you. But unfortunately, I have a very, very short time to stay with you. So, um, um, okay. if it's possible. Yes, Michele, we will ask you uh, your opinion about responsibility and respect because you already have the occasion to discuss. And we knew exactly that this was a very intense time because all the fashion world in, in Italy and France they started with the haute couture and then yeah. the Paris Fashion Week and now Milan and then all the mm -hmm. showcase. So as deputy journalist and of course very long <laughs> experience. In Unfortunately the long, yes. <laughs> long but young uh, experience in your opinion about how brands are communicating in our really authentic in, in their responsible ways. Mm. Yeah. You just mentioned about Prada that I also see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think that the, the, the problem is, is uh, huge because we need to change completely our mentality. Uh, the fashion is a uh, needs to change the mentality uh, so we are not in the same world where we were uh, 10 years ago 
five years ago. We, we, are, we are living in a world that completely, completely, completely changed. And uh, in my opinion, in a better way, in a better way. Uh, and I want to explain, uh, we, oh, we all are more, uh, um, um, we are more, uh, uh, we know better than before that uh, the problem uh, now for the responsibility in fashion is not only about materials, but it is about uh, everything involved in fashion. And uh, I would like to start for one, uh, one thing I, 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 I think every day, uh, I am convinced that um, fashion needs more ethics uh, and in the aesthetics. And I want to mean that the aesthetics of fashion is not only the, uh, is the, not, uh, the only um, thing about fashion, but we have to put in the aesthetic more and more and more ethics. The materials are very important, uh, and I think we have to um, push all the industries to use uh, uh, natural materials uh, to use, but uh, we need to, ch to know the chain from the origin the, of the processes. Because it's not important to use cotton if you don't know from where the cotton arrives in, uh, in your uh, company. Uh, the third uh, thing uh, uh, is the respect of the workers. Uh, I, you can't have the responsibility in fashion if you don't respect your workers. This is the very, 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 very important for me in this time because we, we know every day that the industry, fashion industry is killing its workers everywhere in the world, not only in Asia. We need more respect for the, um, the people for the work, the, the right of workers, and the respect for the work, for the job they do. This is a bit, is a, every, every um, industry and every people, every um, uh, manager has to uh, fight the inhuman uh, uh, working condition because uh, it's the first step uh, mm -hmm. in this time, I, I think. Everybody knows that the world, uh, there is a, a lot of uh, slave labor. Uh, slave labor uh, is a, a very huge part in the Asia um, industries. We know, I remember, uh, it's like a uh, Yesterday, in uh, 2013, in the four, uh, 20, uh, April 24, uh, in Rana Plaza, 1,134 workers were killed and others in, injured. We, today, we don't know what's happened really, who, uh, which brands were uh, um, in, in the Rana Plaza. This is a horrible to think. And uh, if you uh, pay attention okay. in, the, in the other uh, um, aspects, like the, um, I, I, I want to say that, uh, like the uh, sales uh, assistant, that they have a, um, a salary that is like uh, it is the cost of a, a shirt, it's horrible. This is not a responsibility in fashion. This is insane, in my opinion. Thank sorry you. for, because, sorry, oh, maybe. So, um, you are getting to ask something which is, of course, a part of the reality. 
And it's also interesting to connect the responsibility in, in a several aspects that we are saying in our survey, uh, we're seeing that respecting the people is one of the most important parts from workers to the consumer. And this is the reason why we want to be completely care under this kind of line. But, and also uh, responsibility we see is super connected to innovation. So use innovation. Yeah, with yeah. Innovation, which also is a new way to be creative, but be creative in a responsible way. So this means all the designers that when they design something, when they start their freedom, it's also connected to how to make it and how to be interested. And this is the reason why we open this kind of virtual conversation with all over the world. And now we are focusing American uh, designers and brands. And also we wanted to relate to how to communicate in a better way what many companies are doing because we know that some companies are not the best but some other are very good so we cannot kill everyone <laughs> so for sure this is another very interesting opinion this so, is a very important point i don't know if i can yes. jump into the converse <laughs> you know okay. i i think this is the key point you know the responsibility has to be broader than ingredients, as we all said, you know, in our conversation. Ingredients are important, but there are much more than these, and they start with companies, they start, uh, you know, with uh, how the company are working. And, uh, you know, and for example, at class, we have uh, three, uh, well, four kind of criteria, you know, when we say it's responsible or not responsible. Uh, the first one is looking at the company. The second one is looking how is the ingredient, where it's coming from the ingredient, how you transform it, how you finish it. But main one that we have to add in these five years is which is the end of life of this product. So where are you going to leave it at the end of the life? Because uh, you can create maybe something amazing, but then we have to to solve the part of the waste that is still a responsibility toward people and toward the, you know, the, the environment. And, uh, and then we have uh, the, what we call the new generation of values that are coming not from uh, you know, the trade, but are coming directly from the consumer. And we already talked a little bit about them. Like people want transparency. The consumer want to know how you make things, where the things are coming from, who did the clothes how you do things, you know? So even if maybe the transparency is not highlighting 100% sustainable because it's very challenging, but at least the fact that you say where you are, it's really important. It gives you the honesty that you need to have. Uh, you know, the fact on how much chemicals do you use, it's something that for the consumer is really important. And look at after COVID, the protection, you know, the fact that you take care about water, energy, these are all elements uh, that the consumer has been pushing because of the resources, because of the fact that we know, you know, the climate change, it was not even on the radar screen maybe 10 years ago. So we have new values, you know, for example, you know, the, the kind of way you use, uh, uh, well, also ethical for sure, but, you know, we need to take more care about these things not all in once because it's not possible to tick all the you know levels but that's why you need a strategy the strategy and to communicate the strategy is really helping the consumer because if you say to the consumer i want to be this i want to save water i want to eliminate uh, you know whatever and then step by step you can get there and at this point you need the certification or you know, the measurement, because the certification and measurement are not a stamp to say you are sustainable, but are a tools to guarantee that what you say about yourself and sustainability is true, because it's vice versa. We cannot say we are sustainable because we have a certification, <laughs> because it's not like that. The certification and lab tests are proving that what you say is measurable. And that is something that is a new conversation 
because we know from market research, you know, the consumer does not, you know, what are two main reasons why the consumer is not so, is not yet so looking to buy sustainable, uh, you're at least from the people that is communicated sustainability, the first one is still the style. <laughs> and the second one is that they do not believe so much that the things that they buy are sustainable because nobody is telling them the story behind it, you know? So, so that's why I was really into what Will was saying about let's tell, let's tell the story, but you know, let's tell the story about how you make the story <laughs> and not yeah. just tell the story that is very engaging, but has nothing else behind it. Because at this point, you know, it's going to be greenwashing yeah. or, you know, um, if you are just doing the story making, so being very good in this value and you're not able to tell the story, the storytelling, you're just expensive. So yeah. this is a, a very important, you know, can, can I chime in on that? Go ahead. So, so that's that's great, um, Juicy. I agree a hundred percent. I think if I just go through this session, just agreeing with what you say, I'll probably do fine. Um, <laughs> but the the um, we have a way that we think about telling stories. It's kind of like a process that I'd love to share, if that's okay. Um, and it really comes down to three things um, that I think are really important. Um, one is value, two is veracity, three is vibe. I want to unpack those a little bit. We talked a lot about value and not just understanding the company's value, but also understanding the consumer's value, what's important to them. Exactly. It's really important to know what's important to that consumer because that gives you some common ground to relate to them, to understand what they're seeking, what they're looking for, and to get their eyes and ears open, particularly in a digital world where we're not always face-to-face. -face. It's not always an in-store communication. This needs to come through, through digital content, through social media. So doing the exercise of writing down your company's values, and what you understand your consumer's values to be, and then seeing which ones line up together will give you a great place to start telling stories where your consumers are green. The second one is veracity. You know, um, we talk a lot about trust and how important trust is, but trust is really a result. Trust is a result of honesty. Trust isn't an action that a brand can take. The, 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 only, the only action that you can take is being honest. And so veracity really needs to be the second bucket where you can go through and say, how can we be our most honest selves? Are we able to be honest about our products, how we source them, how we create them, um, can we be fully transparent about those things? If not, why? Um, and if so, let's do that. So veracity is really, really important in terms of how you're telling your story. So you have your values, then you're able to tell your story with truth. And then the last thing is something we call vibe. And it's what's the energy that we want to leave people feeling? What is that vibe? What is that point of connection? How do we tell our story? in a way that's compelling or interesting? Does it need to be Absolutely. something that is about compassion? Does it need to be something that feels cool? And so when you put those three things together, now you have a way, you have a framework that you can actually create the stories that you wanna tell. Um, and it's really important to put those things on paper. One of the questions that came up in the chat is, what is one of the latest trends in Los Angeles? And um, I think that the, the notion of leading with purpose, I don't want to call it a trend, but I see it becoming a lot more important for, for, for brands to understand how do I lead with purpose? How can I do that? How can I convey 
the soul of who we are. And it's that framework that we use once you go through that, now you have a narrative that you can use in your creative, whether it's in an ad, whether it's in a video, whether it's in a campaign, those really become the building blocks for that. And now you can kind of translate in that, that into social media, into um, things like we're doing today, virtual events, virtual panels, connecting people from around the globe. Um, and, and you've got the, the foundation to tell that story. Can I? Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, because I, I have to leave uh, this uh, interesting conversation, um, I would like to say the last, uh, my opinion. And uh, I want to say I'm a complete, I completely agree um, with the uh, well, with the uh, Juicy uh, about uh, something, uh, something very important. It is a, the communication strategy, because uh, I think we have in this time uh, a new generation uh, arrives to be consumer, and is the generation Z. Millennials uh, is a generation that uh, was uh, not so ready uh, to understand the responsibility because uh, they were con considered uh, only consumers from the beginning. Now we have uh, the new generation, is the Z generation, they, uh, is a generation born when uh, the fake news still exists. So uh, they want, they now ask the honesty of product. They want, want to buy the product with a, a communication very, very honest because the communication have to say what the products say. And this is a, the, the new, uh, for me, is important for the, for the companies, for the industries, and for, especially for the fashion product. Yeah, the measurement are becoming essential. <laughs> also for sustainability, it's not anymore green, or eco, but you need to tell me what and the third party, you know, uh, exactly. study that is telling what. Exactly, exactly. So uh, I am very, very, very sorry, but I know people <laughs> in, the, in the door, they ask me for uh, <laughs> something new. And uh, I'm very sorry, but I have to leave this uh, beautiful conversation, interesting uh, uh, conversation, a, a beautiful people as well. And uh, I hope uh, we, we can meet again in, um, in the future. Okay, yeah. very soon. Very soon. So thank you, Michele, because you open another aspect, Ciao. but register Ciao. everything, we will send you the registration and we will keep in touch again. So with all the panelists, thank you, Michele. Thank you. Thank you, Juzi. Thank you, Will. Thank ciao. you. Ciao, Michele. Ciao, ciao, ciao. ciao. So I, I want to just keep the conversation for some of the questions again, and then, of course, uh, we will close. But I have several questions to Will in a certain way, talking about uh, how to communicate to this young generation, as Michele was already mentioned, anticipated me, how to communicate the honesty or the authenticity of sustainable uh, contents or sustainable material. Because on the behind the scene, many materials companies, mostly tanneries, they face a lot of challenging and also concern 
how to communicate that their product is sustainable using a very fresh and organic language. So this is really something that after COVID, it's becoming the, the first tool for most of them. And the same question is also for brands and designers that design products, how they can communicate in the store that their material, their product was being made with honesty. It's a big yeah. question, maybe. <laughs> yeah, should I respond? Yes, for you. Yeah. Um, good, really important questions. And, and I, have a couple, I have a couple of thoughts about that. Um, you know, the Gen Z is an action generation. And that gets tricky when it comes to communication because oftentimes communication is seen as just words. It's seen as just things that we say, right? Um, but they wanna see actions. So one of the questions that is really important, I think for us to ask ourselves when we get ready to communicate with Gen Z is why should the world want my brand to exist? What is important about the work that we have to do? And um, to be able to communicate that is really good. And even, you know, just like people, you know, brands are just like people that none of us are perfect and we're all constantly improving. And, and one big thing to do is communicate what actions you're taking to constantly improve your brand, to constantly improve your contribution to society. And as you're able to do that, as you're able to, uh, to when, when people realize, hey, um, our company takes percentages of our income and we support these causes that are really important. Um, that's an action that you're taking. They want to know what you're doing to improve the world. Or if you're saying, hey, um, you know, we have this process or that process, and over the course of the next three years, five years, whatever it is, we're, in, we're improving that process. We're improving how we're sourcing products, those kinds of things. So what Gen Z is listening for is, what are you doing to make the world better? And when you know that that's what they're listening for, then you can speak into that. So that's really an important way to build a communication strategy when you're trying to reach that younger generation. Interesting. Interesting because you already asked one question, which were how the American uh, consumer, in this case, young consumer are switching their mentality and how they are uh, how they are in understanding sustainability someone are also asking which are the new words of sustainability if you have to use some sustainable words but you do want to use sustainable <laughs> sustainability are there any new uh, words uh, subjects that can be used for describe sustainability well, but also juicy, both of you. Well, what yeah. do you? Yeah. Sure. Uh, um, I think an important word is purpose, mm -hmm. and knowing that. Um, Gen Z wants to know that as a brand, you have a, a purpose. You have a, a purpose that's more than um, selling products. That's important. Um, I think commitment, that as a brand, you have a, a commitment and the, and the consumers that you're committed to. Um, and I think one of the, an important word um is change you know and change comes in many different ways change comes in innovation um change comes in creativity um and then 
you know, I think that last but not least, one of the things that's really important is um, accountability. And that's where uh, Juicy was speaking about um, measuring the effects, measuring the change, measuring the progress, you know, being able to independently verify what you're saying and, and, um, and improvements. So those are some of the hot topics for Gen Z audiences. Interesting. And Juicy, what do you, which are your new words? If you want to define sustainability. <laughs> For sure, I'll build on what Will was saying, because it's really, you know, the purpose is really one of the key things, for sure. And then, you know, something that um, we start using something like 2003, but, you know, how we should innovate in a responsible way. You know, responsible innovation is key, because... Uh, you know, when you talk about sustainability, generally speaking, people think that we need to go back in order to do things that was better, but it's not like that. We live in this world, we live in the contemporary world, and we need to progress. And I think there is a lot, as Michele was saying, now is much better. <laughs> we have to say, we all remember you know, the rivers, also in Italy when people was dying a fabric and, you know, and you could say which was the trend of the color in the river. So I believe that responsibly innovation is key because uh, we need to innovate, you know, thinking and considering human beings and considering the environment. Um, and inside of this responsibility, we have to think more and more about the end of life, you know, to think circular because it's the only way that we can think, you know, circular economy is quite an abused into brackets word as well, like sustainability, but it's really important. We need to start thinking. And that's why I come with another word that is in my heart, that is design responsibility, because we can do something, really something, if we start from design. The new role of designer in circular economy is really to design, not just a shape or a color, but where the material are coming from, the kind of purpose of these uh, garments or, you know, whatever is the product, and also the end of life and which are the source. You know, as I was mentioning at the beginning, I think this is an amazing time because we have so many opportunities. A designer today can choose to source from, uh, you know, garments that are already existing <laughs> or new materials or you know you have the vintage market you have the swap you have you know we have so many opportunities around so i think one of the key uh, role from now on and we know that a lot of big companies as set as sent the designer to school <laughs> is really to become circular you know to start thinking about designer in a completely new way and inside of the designer, you have uh, how to drive the product, but also inside of the product, you have also the message of communication because when you choose your design strategies and the design strategy can be to last longer, not to use water or to become, uh, uh, I don't know, completely no energy or no use of new material, you know, whatever. Of course, inside of what you want to be, it's also the kind of, storytelling coming from the story maker that we are talking about. So for me, it's really essential today that, uh, you know, we understand that the role of designer, like the role of innovation in circular economy is broader than just invent new materials, <laughs> but it's also how to use at best what we already have, because it's creativity is design that lead the world. So, this is for me the, the, the key words and for sure, you know, when we say honest, I think we need to learn how, you know, to use an independent voice to, uh, you know, support what we say. Um, I like to remind, for example, uh, two things. Nike chief officer that was saying there is no innovation without, can you believe it? So, you cannot think you are innovative if you are not sustainable. Of course, innovation and sustainability 
at the beginning in 2007 was a challenge. Today is the new normal, <laughs> you know, yeah. because that's what we need. So I think uh, we have so great opportunity in front of us. We need just to uh, use uh, all the, you know, I keep saying the three dimension, you know, class is about the three dimensions. So design aesthetics, uh, we talk about innovation and we talk about responsibility. And this three dimension needs to be respected when you develop, but also when you communicate. So, and if people say that sustainability is not possible to measure, that is just greenwashing. And last but not least, I remember, you know, when Camera della Moda in, in Italy, three years ago, they commissioned to uh, Pricewaterhouse, um, uh, Pricewaterhouse Cooper, a market research to Italian millennial. So we are not talking about Scandinavia, we are talking about Italy, consumer, millennials. And uh, I share with you just three things that has impressed me. You know, 88% of Italian millennials were saying that we were a little bit annoyed with Italian designer because they were not so, I'm talking about three years ago, eh, by the way, it, they were not so sustainable. But still 80-80% was saying that even when the designer were sustainable and understand the message of sustainability, and last but not least, when the interviewer ask her to these uh, millennials how they wanted the sustainability to be communicated. They said, and I, I was smiling for half an hour because you know we are for a long time in this uh, field. And they said, do you know? And hand text that instead of the composition, they talk a little bit about how they made it and you put a QR code and we can have the whole process on our website. Yes, interesting. <laughs> And I think the technology evolved so much, we do not need even a QR code because there is advanced reality, augmented reality, you know, you can do whatever. So, but think about Italian millennials saying, can you please tell me a little bit more than a, comp a composition? Yeah, so, and this is, this is also taking us to, it's, it's very interesting to listen and also Michele before was, making the vision between what millennial has the approach to sustainability, what generations did. And this is a question to Will. How do you see the American scenario in sustainability? Even according to what, uh, of course, Juzi was saying, well, how do you see the scenario after COVID in the American market for maybe generations Z that will face uh, to fashion, to product, to consume, or even to design, because sometimes we have this kind of connection. I design my object and I consume my object and I use it. So do you have any, anything to share in your opinion of the future scenario in American market or American Generation Z? Yeah, I think so. I think that, um, one of the things that's going to be really important coming out of COVID-19 is the sense of community and the idea that in facing these, these crises, um, community is really important. And um, from, a, from a communication and storytelling standpoint, consumers are not just looking to the brand to tell its story. They're finding out from other people. They're listening to what other people have to say. They're listening to what the community has to say. Um, this is really, really, really um, important for Gen Z. One of the things that brands can do to participate in that community is to actually partner with that community to identify influential voices from that community, you know, influential millennials, influential Gen Z um, individuals, and work directly with them and allow, you know, these people that are um, very, very influential among these groups to help tell the brand story. Because these people are, are, are trusted faces and trusted voices within these communities. So I think coming out of COVID, um, 
the interaction um, among people with other people through social media is really, really heightened. We're all learning how to operate more digitally, how to operate more remotely. Um, so connecting to other people through communities are really important. And so in telling your story, working with what we might call influencers, people that the audience trusts and listens to, whether it's because they're smart, whether it's because they're cool, whether it's because they understand fashion, whether it's because they understand sustainability, whether they're fighting for um, the right actions to take place. There's individuals that are emerging as very popular and influential. Um, and working closely with them can be a great tactic to have your story told properly in this world where community is so important. Interesting, this part. And you know why it's interesting also? Because it's a, it's a way that the communication is changing. And also it's a way that, as Juzi was saying, to design and not shape. So which means design means you have to go in deep in what in front of you, and now you can manipulate and to be a real designer. And this is really one of the big message that we want to leave today. Today also, responsibility is also this. If you are a designer, you need to be competent. You need to give to the consumer uh, something which is a real design and not shaping. Shaping means when you, you pick everything and you don't know exactly which is the content. And this is really a typical, let me say, an Italian attitude to think about the content, the quality, the design aspect, the aesthetic and the beauty. So I think we touched several topics. I see that we have some other uh, question, but I, I want to say that we are still, uh, in a way to be connected in the near future, <laughs> because luckily now we can also <laughs> Uh, just open a Zoom call and then we can also talk online. I think it's super nice, this part. So thank you, all of you. I want to close our forum. I know that Fulia is following us. Michele is texting guy now. He's already jumping in a, in a fashion show. And this is our new life. Thank you, Juicy. Thank you, Will. Thank you, Fulvia. And tell, thank you, Michele, and thank you to all the community to listen to us and stay in contact in the next weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all of you. Thank you, Fulvia, and thank you, Arietta. Ciao. Bye. I will. Thank you. Yes, keep in touch. Keep in touch. Ciao. Yes, ciao. Ciao, ciao. Bye.